know when you hear Steve Buttleman, it is time for Keeneland. Welcome to Keeneland at Home, presented by Central Bank. I'm your host, Christina Blacker. I hope you were able to enjoy the races yesterday as we kicked off this unprecedented and very unique summer meet. Full day one action was exciting, and we are right back at it again today at Keeneland. Thursday has a nine race program once more. Post time is at 105 Eastern. You will not want to miss any of the action. And if you're joining us here, and of course, if you're watching the races throughout the day, we do hope that you will use the hashtag Keeneland at home. There are several ways that you can watch the races in this program online. And please share it with your friends, share the hashtag, spread the love, and let everybody know that you are a racing fan and you want to make more racing fans out of your friends and family. Also wanted to remind you, if you look to the Keeneland website, you can actually download a free digital program. Just head to the website, then to the racing tab. And if you scroll down, you'll see where you can go ahead and download that so you won't miss any of the action. You might want to have those programs handy because we are going to have some expert analysis from Ellis Star once more today. He gave you two winners on our Wednesday program, so we are going to task him with that once more this afternoon. Also coming up on the show, we'll visit with our friends at Maker's Mark for another special signature cocktail recipe for today. A bedology lesson for those of you that might be just dipping your toe into the shallow end, learning how to wager on the races and hopefully make a little extra money this afternoon. And we'll check in with one Lexington-based influencer who is going to show us all how to throw the best watch party from her home. Let's jump right in to the program. Yesterday we featured a local artist and their rendition of A Call to the Post. We're gonna do the same today with Nashville-based Matthew Page of the trio D.O.G. Take a listen. <laughs> Matthew will certainly get you fired up for the races today at Keeneland. You can head to their website for a little bit more. D-O-G, that's D-E-E-O-H-G-E-E dot org. It is time now for our signature cocktail of the day. Yesterday, we taught you how to make the Keeneland Breeze, a little ale eight in there, perhaps, if you like it. Today, we're going to kick it up a notch with the 46 and change. Let's join once more Thomas Bolton with today's signature cocktail for this Thursday at Keeneland. Hey everybody, my name is Thomas Bolton. I'm the distillery diplomat for Maker's Mark. And today I'm going to teach you how to make the 46 and change cocktail. Now that's one that you'll also be enjoying trackside at Keelan. We can finally get back in there and watch the horses run. So what you're going to start with first is orange bitters. You're going to go three dashes of that. Then a half part of lemon juice. All right. Next, it is one part orange liqueur. All right. Two parts pineapple juice that we have right here. And then of course, you guessed it, 46 for the 46 and change cocktail. One and a quarter part of Maker's 46. Now you're going to shake this cocktail. So you're going to take some ice, you get it from your ice maker home, buy it at the gas station, throw it into your shaker, as it's going to get loud uh, when I shake. But a key to shaking and making a good cocktail is smiling when you shake, because if you're happy, the cocktail is happy. So give it a smile and shake. Everything's mixed up in there. You're then going to get a glass. Now, I like to use crushed ice. And I know what you're thinking. I don't have crushed ice at home, but you do. If you've got a towel, an ice, and a hammer, you can make crushed ice. So then, from there, pour that cocktail in. And you're going to garnish this. With a nice little lemon wheel, which you see right here. Slide it on the glass and enjoy. Cheers!
Happy cocktails make happy people. Enjoy your day today with the 46 and change. And you can find more recipes at makersmark.com. All right, it's time now for our expert race analysis. And joining me to discuss the Thursday program is a man that gave you two winners yesterday. And that is Ellis Starr, the Uber capper from Echo Base. Ellis, nice picks yesterday with Savvy and Maven. We are going to challenge you to do it once more. But before we dive into this race program today, I just want to ask you how excited you are, at least I am, to see Swiss Skydiver, the Philly, taking on the boys this weekend in the Toyota Bluegrass. Oh, Christina, that makes the race so much better. It's still the signature race. I wrote that in my analysis for our Equibase and America's Best Racing Race of the Week. It's still the bluegrass, still the prep for the Derby. But this is great because she's the leader in the Philly division, and she has more points than Tis the Law in the male division. So she needs to get these points on the board and I'm really looking forward to the race and talking about it tomorrow. I've got one long shot to go along with her and I got one other win contender. I think they really stand out. That's what I want to hear. She is triple crown nominated. So this certainly adds a little intrigue to the weekend, but let's dive in to the Thursday program. Ellis, I want to start with race number four. This is a group of $30,000 claimers, non-winners of two lifetime. We're going to start sort of towards the outside of the field here with Stealth, a horse that was second last time out, Ellis, but second by 10 lengths. How do we analyze that performance? Well, so this is something I learned a long time with Christina, a horse that runs a big race and gets into it with another horse when the winner has drawn off. I call that the race within the race. And she rallied from fifth to second. He rallied from fifth to second, beating a third horse by a neck and really he couldn't see the winner. He didn't know a jockey or only fighting for second. And he fought very hard for second. Also, what's nice is he earned his only win at Keeneland since he only run six weeks a year at Keeneland horses that have previous good form at Keeneland is quite significant. So that's a second thing. And best of all, Julian Le Peru, who was up for the win in April of 2019 and last month in that runner up rides again. So stealth has a lot going for him today. Certainly does. And Julian Le Peru writes that track better than anybody out there at Keeneland. How about the number four, Urbanite? Corey Lannery will be aboard for Grant Forrester. This is a horse that runs off the claim. And as I look at his past performances, I see a lot of italics in those running lines. He's been keeping some pretty good company, it looks like. Right. When you see italics in the past performance lines in your program, that means the horse won its next start. And that indicates the race is kind of productive. We talked about that yesterday with Maven and Savvy. Those horses came out of key races. Urbanite won at this distance one before last. He added blinkers. So for fans that are looking at a program, you see that little B, that means a horse added blinkers, which is the hood, and that helps them to focus. If a horse had been running badly and they added blinkers and won, that's a good sign. You now have the reason for why a horse ran well, and that was the reason Urbanite improved. And then he stepped up and ran third last time out, but the winner came back to win, as you mentioned. And the claim also, Grant Forster is a very good trainer who does – very limited starters does really well. So Urbanite could put in another nice race here. How about the horse down at the rail, Ellis? Quarterback Dak seems to be improving. And that's really all you can ask from a horse, right? Each and every time they put the saddle on, he gets better and better. Is he good enough to beat the group today? Well, he has to move up after breaking his maiden, which is winning for the first time. But this is a non-winners of two. So all these horses have one career win. So a horse that won its last race may actually even have an edge over some that won two or three races back because he knows what he did. He knows what he was rewarded for, and he got a lot of praise in the barn. He definitely fits the rail saves ground going around two turns and quarterback deck is another horse in this pretty deep field. One last horse to ask you about, Ellis, and that's the nine, Gemmo Rain to the outside. This is a son of Gemologist. He has a little bit of speed. Will you use him? And then how will you use all of this information to wager on race four? Well, Gemmo Rain has run in three dirt route races. A route is a race that's a mile or more, and he's been first or second in all three races. So he has to be considered. He comes into the race off being beaten the neck. Uh, in a race that's just like this one, a non-winner is a two. And I think the best thing to do here, because you have a 12-horse field, you play an exact a box, which is trying to get first and second in any order. You take four of the 12. You win if any of the two of the four come in first and second. It's only a dollar minimum. It's a $12 bet in total. And you have two horses that can run badly. you got a lot of margin of error here. And you can make a decent profit with this wager. And you've got some prices in there that will help that return out as well, Ellis. I wanted to give the folks just a quick glance at race number six, because this is one I always love the maiden special weight races, seven furlongs the distance. And I thought there were a few notes in here that everybody would want to maybe jot down on that digital program if you downloaded it. The number one movie, Moxie, 
for Susan and Jim Hill of Margot Farm. Eddie Keneally trains the starter of Street Sense. She was very impressive in her debut. She ended up third across the wire at Churchill Downs in a tough race. She was the favorite that day. Keneally does well with first time starters and she should improve in her second start. And then the other horse I wanted to point out was Made to Measure. She breaks from the rail, which can be a bit tough for a first time starter, but she has a half sibling by the name of Valiance who runs for Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners. Valiance won the first three races of her career. Brad Cox trains Made to Measure. So I'd expect her to come out running from that inside post. Ellis, I want to bring you back in for race number eight as we move ahead in the program. Optional claiming company competing here. Non-winners of two, six furlongs is the distance. And again, I want to start sort of to the outside. Dos Vinos is five to two on the morning line for Brett Calhoun. A very big return race last time off the layoff. Do you think she will improve again today? Yeah, I think so, Christina. When you think of racing as a ladder, we talked about yesterday, this is the second allowance level. So horses break their maiden and they run in what's called non-winners of one other than and then non-winners of two. She moves right through that first condition off the layoff. And certainly she has improving to do as a four-year-old and second time back from that layoff from July of last year until May. She's in very sharp form. She has the best equibase speed figure in the field for a dirt race of 99 and with the possibility of improvement she should run even better and it's really good to see jockey mitchell merle riding her back after riding last time out when a jockey knows how to get a horse to perform and wants to stick with it that's a good sign ellis we have some entry mates in here in the one and the 1a from the cipriano Contreras barn two for the price of one for those of you that are new to wagering on horses what did you make of the entry mates and do you give either of them a stronger chance than the other i think at 10 to 1 this is a very interesting entry christina first of all they both have the same jockey name sometimes that means they're going to scratch ones we'll have to wait and see what the scratches say but they fit in the midst of biz has three wins a couple of them were in claiming races but she wanted the one first level allowance one before last in a dirt race just like this at six furlongs then she tried the turf and ran third so back on the dirt she could certainly repeat that effort that she ran back in april and her entry mate ap princess just won her last start as well albeit a little bit more cheap but still it just gives some power here and a value to go along with those finos who's probably going to be the favorite how about the 10 in this group ellis club car i think will take some money four to one morning line coming off a victory last out, and it looks like it was a career best for this filly over at Churchill Downs. And we know those races at Churchill were just coming up so tough in the last few weeks. Absolutely, and she got two lengths on the field at the eighth pole and continued strongly. That was a 94 echo base speed figure, a little short of the other two horses, the 99 that uh, Dos Vinos earned and 96 in the midst of biz. But again, you've got an improving Philly, who's making her third star off a layoff and forces aren't fully mature yet. So she could run even better here and she does fit perfectly at the level. Last horse to ask you about Ellis, and that's the two Cardamon down from the rail. Bill Mott trains this Philly. She's a homebred for Judd Mott Farm. That last race, can we just draw a line through it and go back to some of her prior form? Absolutely, Christine. The fans, when you're looking at programs, you see that circle T for turf. Today's race isn't turf. If the effort's bad, just draw a line through it. And in this case, if you did, you'd see the race right before that was a win, just like the other horses I've mentioned here that was a non-winners of one allowance win. It was a strong effort. And that was off five months off. She's got some improving she could do off that race. So as you said, this is a very strong allowance, but these four fillies look really good. I still think Dos Vino has an edge. How do you play race eight, Ellis, now that we know who you like and who you've kind of centered in on? Well, I thought about using, we call a key and keying Dos Vinos on top, but I think an exacta box here just to make a profit is good if you get the right horses in order. In a big field like this, we shouldn't have a heavy favorite. So we'll do a dollar exacta box of one, two, eight, and 10. Hope that one of the one or one A gets in at 10 to one to make it a nice profit. And Ellis, before I let you go, race number nine, the next race, Maiden Special Weight, a mile and a 16th on the turf course. There's a lot of digging to do as far as pedigrees go and who is going to excel on the surface and at the distance. Who did you like in race nine? Well, just like you, Christine, I use Stats Race Lens, which lets you dig deep dive into some interesting facts. And I came up with one here on number 11, Militarist, who opens at 10 to 1. He showed some ability when he was third in his debut in a sprint, and he was only beaten three lengths last time out off a three-month layoff in a dirt route. His turf race was bad, but he's got some tremendous breeding. This is a half-brother to a horse named Little Mike. For those who remember, won a lot of races, three and a half million bucks. 
And I think this is an interesting play. Florent Giroux sticks, a top jockey sticking with the horse, says a good sign. This horse moving to the grass, if he shows his breeding, can run better than those 10 to 1 odds suggest he will. Beautiful pedigree. Let's see if he has anything like his brother. Ellis, thank you so much. Thanks for the winners yesterday. And fingers crossed, let's go get a couple more today. My pleasure. I hope everybody has a great winning day at Keeneland. Ellis Starr, the Uber capper. More of his analysis and picks can be found on the Keeneland website and also on his Twitter handle if you'd like to go through race by race. Good luck if you're going to play some of those selections. Our next segment is for some of the beginners out there who may be learning how to wager on the races. And as Ellis was talking about, he advised you to play some exactas today to use a few horses to try to pick the top two selections. So to dive deeper into how to play exotic wagers, we're going to go to our next segment, Betology with Rachel. Take a look. Exactas, trifectas, and superfectas. Fun to say, even more fun to place. These bets are called exotic wagers, but don't worry, they're not as complicated as they sound. Last time, we covered the basics of win, place, and show. If you haven't yet seen that video and want to know more, check out the Lessons in Betology playlist on Keeneland's YouTube channel. Let's start with how the bet is structured. An exacta bet is when you pick the horses you think will finish first and second in a race. Let's say we like horses nine and two. These horses have to finish in this order to win and cash a ticket. Similarly, a trifecta bet is when you pick the first, second, and third finishers in order. So let's say you also like horse number four. And finally, a superfecta is when you pick the first four finishers in order. So now let's add the one horse to the wager. Now normally to win these bets, you have to choose the correct order of finish. But here's a trick. You can add what's called a box to your bet, which means that your horses can finish in any order. Essentially, you are placing a bet for every combination of finish order. So let's say you place a trifecta box on horses nine, two, and four. In this scenario, your horses could finish in any order. As long as those three horses are somewhere in the top three positions, you win. But how much does this cost? It all depends on the number of possible combinations or outcomes of your bet. Just remember, for two horses, there are only two combinations. For three horses, there are six possible combinations. And for four horses, there are 24 combinations. Simply multiply your bet amount by the number of combinations in the bet. So, where a standard 50 cent trifecta would cost you 50 cents, a 50 cent trifecta box would cost you $3 since there are more chances to win. Like any bet, payouts depend on a combination of each horse's odds and the amount other people are betting on those horses. So if you place an exacta box on two favorites, you're going to make less than if you placed a bet on two long shots. It's for that reason that many bettors will pair a horse they are sure about with a horse or two that has low odds but could surprise people. In horse racing, anyone can win, and that's exactly why there are no bad bets. Give it a try on Keeneland Select. It's free to sign up, and you can bet on Keeneland Racing or any other track from anywhere. Rachel, thank you so much for that and for the lessons for the newcomers here to the game of horse racing. Keelan at Home, presented by Central Bank, continues. I'm your host, Christina Blacker, and we hope that you are able to enjoy the races at home and also with a little bit of style and added flair. Make it your own, make it your own party. And so we wanted a little bit of insight on that. Lexington-based influencer and artist, Kayla Weber, she certainly has the style. And if you go through any of her social media pages, you'll see horses, you'll see artwork, you'll see family, so many of the things that Keeneland embodies. She is joining us today to help you all throw the best at home watch party as you celebrate Keeneland at home. Hey guys, I'm Kayla Weber Nord and I'm hosting a Keeneland watch party at home. Come on in and I'll show you what we're up to. We have 
some Keeneland breezes we're sipping on. We're about to eat some snacks. We have popcorn. We're getting ready to watch the races. So we've got all of our Keeneland accessories. We've got our Keeneland pillows, our Keeneland glasses, all from the Keeneland shop. We come over here to our bar. We've got Maker's Mark, of course, and then my prints that is part of the Keeneland bundle package. So if you spend more than $35, you get the official summer meet print. We're all hanging out, getting ready to watch the races. Mm -hmm. We've got Rich over here making the Keeneland breezes. And I've worked up a powerful thirst. This is going to be mine. So. <laughs> uh, these Keeneland breezes taste even better if you have a, an official Keeneland glass. So you put lots of ice in there because it's hot here in July. You get to do a nice, healthy pour of the Maker's Mark, the official bourbon of Keeneland. <laughs> and you throw in a little orange curacao just to give it that kind of nice orangey citrus flavor. Put a little bit of ginger ale in here. Let that all kind of mix together. Stir it up. And then I'm gonna garnish it with a fresh orange slice and just do, do a nice little squeeze of that orange in there. Mix it all up. And enjoy. There you go. Cheers. That's a small one. <laughs> How's your Keeneland Breeze? Pretty good. Delicious. Oh, and who's this little, little guy? Oh, look at him. And Grandma Joan. Who are you going to bet on? <laughs> well, you'll win anyway. Yeah. So this is Max. He's going to be a big Keeneland guy someday. He's got his bow tie on. He's ready. <laughs> Kayla, thank you so much for that. You can visit any of her social media channels for more tips and tricks. And she also has a beautiful uh, piece of artwork that has made its way to the Keeneland gift shop there, selling some posters, uh, replicas of that, if you'd like to enjoy it at home yourself to have a special memento of this summer meet at Keeneland. And we hope little Max enjoys his first Keeneland meet as well. You know, they tell you when you get into TV never to work with kids or animals, right? It's a little bit risky. Not Kurt Becker. He's not shy. We have asked you to send in your home videos and he is going to give it his own little twist with a special race call of your Keeneland home videos. So today our submissions come from Katie Ritz. She has Rosie and Aspen and also from Laura and Tim Vice with Asta, Addison and Lucky. Take a look and a listen. Here we have Rosie and Aspen. Now Aspen was supposed to be ready to run at Keeneland in July. Rosie knows time is wasting. It's time to get Aspen to the track. But, oh, there's so much good grass to be eaten. All right, all right. Rosie has just informed us. She's calling an audible. She's going to get Aspen ready for the, uh, the fall meet instead. Now entering the track, this is Addison. Say hello to Addison, making her career debut today. Now, this is Asta who is with her. So Addison's on her way around the course. Asta will try to keep up. And let's see, we seem to have disappeared. We're waiting. Oh, here we go. Oh, Addison took a tumble there. That's all right. First career start makes a quick recovery. Oh, wait a minute. Now, here's Lucky. Here's Lucky. Now, Asta, you do not get to phone a friend for help. That is not how this works. Addison is the winner here. You other two are disqualified. And Asta's not going to let this go. Kurt, as always, thank you so much for making those videos that much more entertaining, and we look forward to hearing your voice in your race calls all afternoon. And speaking of that, we're not far off from first post. 105 Eastern is when we begin the nine race program for this Thursday today at Keeneland. Wanted to remind you how you can watch. You can go ahead and continue 
streaming the races online at Keeneland.com, also Keeneland's YouTube channel. You can watch with my colleagues over at TVG as well. I do hope you will have a little bit of luck on that nine race program. Don't forget, Ellis Starr gave you his selections. Those are also available on the website if you'd like to take a second look there. I want to thank everybody who made this show possible today, our friends at Switcher Studio, for helping us get this up and running and excited to bring it to you. Also, our very generous sponsors, of course, Central Bank, Kentucky Utilities, Cool More America, TVG, Keeneland Select, Toyota, and Makers Mark. For everyone who made this possible this afternoon, we hope that you enjoyed Keeneland at Home presented by Central Bank. Stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy the races today. We'll see you back here tomorrow. <laughs>